All right, not knowing anything about One Piece, I was extremely excited to finally reach the Grand Line. All I knew was that we moved through the equator for some reason, which is weird now that I think about it. But we stole a map of the Grand Line from Buggy, which I think was changed to a map of Reverse Mountain, because having a map of all of the Grand Line would probably ruin a little bit of the magic. So instead, we get a map of Reverse Mountain, and we learn that the entire system has been replaced with uh, this thing called a log pose. Magnets, the sun, stars, all the other methods that you normally use to direct yourself at sea, they don't work here. In order to figure out what's going on, you need to stay on an island for a while and just wait for your log post to adjust until you can start to move to the next island further along the Grand Line. It is a good way to make your characters stay in one place and not just book it towards a new destination right away. So when they finally arrive to Reverse Mountain, we see that there is this huge chunk of land which turns out to be the Red Line, which is uh, a bit strange. I would like to know how it naturally occurred, if it naturally occurred. It's like a giant landmass that reaches the sky, and so the only way to actually get into the Grand Line is definitely through Reverse Mountain. All we simply gotta do is take the very strong water current up the narrow pathway, try not to crash into anything on the way up. Seriously, that looks really fatal, and I do wonder how many ships don't even get past this point. But once we get up there, we can enjoy the nice, calm, speedy way down. Oh, and look at the scale of that thing. It is really well illustrated to be able to demonstrate this almost unimaginable scale. And the crew notices it too as they subsequently crash into it and get swallowed up by this whale laboon. And that's one piece. The end. They all they all die. That's not <laughs> That's that's not what happens, but I would just love if a story did that out of nowhere. Uh, no, somehow, inside Laboon, there is an island and a bunch of metal tunnels so that this Dr. Crocus... Crocus? So that this Dr. Crocus can just cure and repair Laboon whenever it gets injured. Which means that technically, we get a whale submarine. Why would you want to repair from the inside? I don't know. It's probably easier, faster, probably safer inside the whale. As we're told, Laboon used to follow a pirate crew around until the captain set out on a quest to travel around the world. So they went over Reverse Mountain, leaving Laboon behind, taken care of by Crocus. And then, uh, you know, considering how dangerous the Grand Line is and how it's been over 50 years since they promised to come back, um, I, I don't think they're coming back. And if they won't, then Laboon will, which is why they've been bashing their head against this mountain. And Luffy's solution to make Laboon stop is to challenge Laboon to a fight. And upon trading a few hits, just put the fight on a long pause, only for it to continue when they come back from this journey. Like, it is an adorable fix, as, like, Luffy paints uh, a seal of approval here on Laboon, which is why Laboon isn't allowed to bash their head in, because it would just ruin the agreement to their fight. Oh, it's so cute. I mean, it's a cute story, and it works to lengthen Reverse Mountain a bit, because I think otherwise they would get past it in, like, two chapters. And as they're tying up loose ends in East Blue, we get introduced to some new storylines, like Mr. Nine and Miss Wednesday, two really cheesy and really bad villains who work for a secret agency, but they can't say who. And they try to hunt down Laboon, but just immediately get beaten up and just tossed out to sea. And then they beg for the crew to take them home? They're, they're weird villains, and this is a weird setup, I'm not gonna lie. They just give them a slap on the wrist for trying to kill a whale and for shooting a person? That's weird! But Luffy says, yeah, sure, we'll take you home, so I guess they're just dealing with it. But okay, Crocus mentions, in order to traverse the Grand Line, you must pick one of seven magnetic fields following their own set of islands. So does that mean that our crew is only going to follow these islands? In, in other words, are we going to visit only one out of seven islands since we can't really just uh, check all of them in a curved pattern? Like in a very, very zigzaggy pattern? I don't know, that's just my little question. But besides that, I do wonder if the seven fields tie at all to the seven warlords because it just feels like something could be done there, you know? 
but I guess only time will tell. But for the rest of the crew, they gotta take Mr. Nine and Miss Wednesday home, so they decide to take Whiskey Peaks. It's still pretty weird that we're taking someone who would be willing to kill a whale submarine uh, over to Whiskey Peaks and not even question that part, really. <laughs> but all right, it just feels kind of weird to have this connection with Laboon and also be like, oh, yeah, you try to kill him? Ah, uh, don't worry about that part. Like, it's, you know, no conflict there, really, when you, you know, we're, we're ignoring that conflict. <laughs> 